One of the key things about the brain is people consider it the window to the soul. The brain houses how you interact with the world, right? How you see the world. When I see patients with newly diagnosed brain tumors, they're at a very vulnerable position in their lives, right? You're holding that part of their soul almost in your hands. Sorry, my hands are cold. Yes, yes. How are you feeling today? Oh, great. You ready for today? Oh, yeah, I'm nervous now. You here, I'm good. Let's go. Mr. Meeks, how you If it weren't for my mentor, who's a neurologist, back in my hometown, I wouldn't have been able to see what neuroscience is like taking care of patients right there in front of you with neurological conditions. And I think for me, being able to see people out there doing the work and taking care of patients with those type of diseases made it possible for me to continue in those footsteps. All right, I'll okay. see you. All, All right. right, thank All you. Right. Thank you. And I tell patients, you know, when they come in, their eyes get wide open because they see, first of all, this huge big white room with all this stuff, and they see so many people in the room. It can be extremely overwhelming. You have to warn them beforehand that there are a lot of people involved in your care so that we can do the best thing for you, right? So there's the nursing team. We have our circling nurses as well as the scrub nurses. I have a resident. Sometimes I have one or two residents with me to assist me with the surgery. Our anesthesia team, obviously, as well. We have our stereotactic team. So they actually help us load the scan onto the system so that we can actually target exactly where we need to go. My subspecialty is focused on neurosurgical oncology. And as a fellowship trained neurosurgical oncologist, I take care of patients with brain tumors. And this includes benign brain tumors like uh, meningiomas, also malignant brain tumors. So brain metastases, so cancer that started from the lung, the breast, et cetera, that traveled to the brain. Also primary brain tumors like glioblastoma. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure there are only major vessels on the surface. Usually when a brain tumor is found, particularly if it's a cancerous or malignant subtype, you have about one to two weeks to get that patient on the surgery schedule in order to expedite their care. Many times they're under general anesthesia, but sometimes they're under awake surgeries, which I also perform. And then what we do is we use their MRI that they obtained. We load it into the system and surgery for GPS to the brain to actually figure out exactly where we need to make our incision. We clean and prep everything, we make the incision, do perform the craniotomy where we take off the bone flap, and then we open the dura, which is the covering of the brain, and we go and take out the tumor. We're gonna bring in the microscope in a minute. I'm just trying to get this big mass out. The main goal of it is to remove the tumor as much as you can uh, without causing the patient any neurological deficit. And then once you've completed the surgery, you close everything back up. You put the bone back on, you close up the scalp, wake them up from anesthesia and see how they're doing. The beauty about neurosurgery is that it's ever-changing. How I train is very different than how I practice. Um, for instance, uh, laser interstitial thermal therapy wasn't available until the end of my chief residency year. And this is a minimally invasive approach to literally burn a tumor or a lesion where patients otherwise didn't have a surgical option before. In addition, 5-LA is a way that we can actually have a high-grade uh, primary neoplasm fluoresce underneath the microscope so you can take out more tumor that you didn't know was there. And our stereotaxis, the way we are able to localize lesions, has improved significantly. The brain is still the final frontier. Um, there are still pathways that we don't understand completely. Neural circuitry that we don't understand. The connectomics is extremely complex. And I love seeing the opportunities and the things that will unfold over time. And you can see the future right in front of you. Being a neurosurgeon though is, is more internal than anything else. So I think having a strong mental fortitude is important have people's lives in your hands. But I think what drives us is knowing that there's high risk, but also high reward. So when you have that patient uh, whose life that you saved, that's a big high, it's a big rush, right? And you wanna keep achieving that every time. <laughs>